So let's uh, let's just jump into this. Let's just start. Uh, this week for this seminar, uh, we're three weeks in to the format, or we're going into our third week, and I figured what a better time, uh, or no better time, uh, to just do a Strixhaven re-review. I feel like usually what happens is there are, um, you know, the set reviews come out, people have like a good, you know, foundational understanding of approximately how good cards are, but then there's like not this, not a second wave of recontextualization. Like you get trinkets, trinkles of, you know, information tidbits here and there, but you can pick up on it. But especially if you aren't like totally in tune with, uh, you know, you're not drafting five times a day, it can be kind of hard to um, just, just like chunk all that information and really get a good sense of where every card belongs in the format. So I'm not going to be going over every single card in the format, but it's going to be pretty close. <laughs> so buckle in. I got about 70 slides, I think. Hopefully I will uh, not, uh, I will not uh, linger too long on each one. But uh, yeah, that's our plan for today. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So yeah. By the way, just to get back in, into this re-review, uh, just to contextualize it a bit. Um, well, the point number one is to contextualize the cards a bit better. Um, but for you know, for Strixhaven, it being a uh, you know a guild set, I'm gonna be going over uh, some big picture concepts, but also just like I'm gonna be going through each guild and then eat some like odds and ends at the end. So that's our itinerary for today. Anyways. Uh, so a lot of this, a lot of the recontextualization of where the cards have landed is, of course, based on how good Learn Lesson turned out to be, right? Um, the, I think the number one uh, indicator of a good draft in this format is how many learning cards and how many good uh, lessons do you have in your lesson board, really, right? I'm aiming for, I don't know, five, six learn cards and ab about the same number of lessons uh, on my lesson board. Um, we'll of course be going over the good ones and the you know the medium ones, but most of them are pretty good. It's hard to go wrong um, So that's a huge contextualization factor here of where things started and where they are now basically um, Here uh, and, and like on top of that is that the college synergies, you know, you look at Contouris, look at Blood Researcher um, Are kind of much less important strategy uh, synergies so like you can lean into these in some of your drafts but they're not that important, right? Like, I'd say like one in every, I don't know, 20 drafts, you'll have a good Contorious deck. Blood Researcher a little bit more, but like the get to eight land stuff, the, the life gain stuff, the, you know, uh, what else is there? Silver Quill's like counter stuff. It's not as important. Again, you can lean into it, but it isn't defining, uh, it's, it's not format defining. It's not really what the format is about, I would say. Um, so all the cards like Contorious, Blood Researcher, these, car these cards that look very synergistic get bumped down a little bit. Not to say they're not good cards, not to say you can't make them good. They're just not uh, the most important cards in the format. Um, so I just want to start with a top uncommon list. Um, these are my top four uncommons. You know, like, it gets a little bit messy off, uh, after that, but these are the, I think, clear top four uncommons. And, uh, Igneous Inspiration, Professor of Symbology, Killian and Rutha. Now, you could take Killian and Rutha over the monocolored cards because I think they are stronger cards when you play them in the deck, but of course, you know, you're offered some flexibility with Professor and Avian's Inspiration. Um, you know, Inspiration, you know, looks, reads very good. It is very, very good. Uh, it's just like you, you, get, you are very sad when your opponent casts Igneous Inspiration on your two or three drop, you know? Um, also just going to the face is really relevant a lot of times. You can just like set up turns where you go like, all right, well, you know, Igneous Inspiration you, go get my Expanded Anatomy, put it on my flyer, you're dead from eight or whatever, you know? Uh, Professor of Symbology, you know, it doesn't look that much better than like Hunt for Specimens, you know, like the black one uh, that makes a one one pest, but it is markedly better, <laughs> I would say, because it can trade, it can attack quite well. Killian, Rutha, busted. Both of these cards are busted in their own right. Uh, a little note about Rutha is that it goes a lot later than it should, just going by the 17 lands data. So like, Rutha is truly busted, uh, but if you get her sixth, be a bit cautious, because <laughs> that might not mean what you think it means. I think on average she goes like fifth or sixth or something like that. Or remember, it's, sorry, it's like fourth or fifth, which is still really late for this card. Um, Killian busted on, like, just also kind of truly busted. Needs like a little bit more help, um, but not a lot, right? 
Uh, chat says Killian definitely needs removal to back it up. Like, a little bit, but not really, right? Just like, two mana lifelink menace is very, very good, and there's so many spells that target things. Like, it just works with pump spells, and it works with your removal spells, right? I know, if you've played this format at all, I don't have to sell you on how busted this card is, but it's very, very, very good. <laughs> so, um, I'm noting these four, because I believe these are the four uncommons that I take uh, no questions asked over environmental sciences early on, right? Later in the draft, if you don't have a sciences, you can pick this card uh, above these cards because it's so important to have your first copy. Um, but early on, I think these are the four cards that I am confident taking uh, over environmental sciences. But and that speaks volumes for how good environmental sciences is, right? Um, let's talk about environmental sciences. So this card you should be taking, I believe, pick one, pack one over every common and every uncommon except for these ones, right? There are some rares, of course, but honestly, the, the list of rares that I think you should be taking over in my month of sciences is a lot smaller than you might think. A lot smaller than I thought going into the set, for sure. Um, this card, you know, I feel like a lot of people have talked about it. Sam Black, myself, Lords Limited, limit, basically every limited, uh, you know, content creator out there, but just, just to, you know, uh, retry old ground here. The card is so important because the fact that on all of your learn cards you can just get a land, it makes it, it just adds such consistency to your deck, right? It's not about splashing. It's great if you're splashing and it is the number one splashing tool because all of your learn cards now say they get your splash source, which means you can have like seven sources of your splash source without disrupting the rest of your mana base. But the fact that you can keep a two lander and a hunting for specimens or a professor of symbology is insane. And the rest of your hand is just gas, right? Uh, this card's great. <laughs> I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna linger on it too long. It's just great. And sometimes, hell, the two life matters for your life game synergies or just like winning a race or something. Um, so yeah, these are the four cards you should take over this. Now it gets a little bit muddier. Now that we get to the, uh, you know, some, some good uncommons, but not quite in that busto tier, right? Divide by zero. Um, I know a lot of people have divide by zero in this tier i don't quite have it there um mostly because like it's very very good in the early game and like bouncing a spell and most points of the game is good um but it's a little bit awkward and it's like they resolve their fractal summoning or their elemental summoning and it's like okay that's the thing i need to kill uh but i can't target that obviously because it's a token this can't target token it's still very very good i don't want to talk the card down too much but i've had enough situations where i'm like oh i just prefer burial books here uh, over this card. Now, that does it. I'm not trying to say you shouldn't take this card highly, but I do think I'm taking the first environmental sciences over it. Very close though. Very, very close. Um, in the next, you know, in the same tier, Cultivator does exactly what you want for all the blue-green decks. I, if, you know, no matter where you're, whether you're doing the, like, really rampy stuff or just the, you know, the kind of more beefy, tempo-y, beat y stuff, this card's fantastic. Um, Closing Statement, also great. Quantrix Apprentice, you know, if you've seen any of these cards in action, you know how good they are. Quandrix Apprentice is better than it looks because, I mean, it looks great, but it's even better than it looks because you do get to the point pretty quickly um, where you're just, like, you've got all of the lands out of your deck and you're just drawing action. And because it's worded, you, you put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order, you can start stacking your deck, right? That's great. Um, note on MTGA, you can't do that at a certain until a certain point, so there's a little bit of interface issue, UI issue there, but, you know, it's still just good for getting all the lands out of your deck and making sure you hit all your land drops. Like, this is just a must-kill. Um, you could take these cards over Environmental Sciences. I'm not right now. I don't think it's ridiculous to do so. Pick one, pack one. I, I just, uh, you know, I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, full Control, good to know for Galaxy. Thank you. Full, apparently, Full Control lets you, uh, put the cards in order for Conscious Apprentice. Good to know. Um, you know, the slight next tier, these are, these are pretty similar to these cards, honestly. Um, but Humiliate, this card is much better than most hand disruption spells we see. I mean, most hand disruption spells we see say non-creature, right? Like, um, the, the blue-black one from Guilds of Ravnica, um, that was also quite good. And that said, you know, non-land, not just non-creature. Um, but this can hit creatures, that's obviously great. It is particularly good in, uh in the silver coal decks because hand disruption is better in aggressive decks than it is in controlling decks like usually black has somewhat of a controlling bend to it in most sets but because the black decks are mostly aggressive in this uh set you can go like take your 
you know, your interaction spell, your on-curve thing, disrupt you, and then kill you, right? Normally, if you're in a controlling deck and you have discard, it's like, okay, take your best card. The game's gonna go on for eight, ten more turns, and then it's just like, all right, cool. You know, you're gonna draw out of it. They're gonna draw into their good spells. But if you can take their best spell early, that's really important. And of course, the counter matters a lot, too. The, the counter is huge. So, card is very, very good. Much, much different than uh, cards that you look like this. Devouring Tendrils is like just a reminder spell. Not a reminder spell, a removal spell. <laughs> but it has very, very good stats. Uh, the two life matters just for racing, for uh, the lightning synergy and stuff, too, obviously. Um, it's not quite like, doesn't look, it's not as busted as these other cards, but it's very good. I'm taking it early. Bookworm is interesting. Um, I don't actually think it's the size of a pick as these other ones, but like it is the best finisher for the Quandrix decks, for like the Prismari decks that they're splashing. So like, I'm not really taking this highly because there's a lot of other good finishers, like even just Leyline Invocation or Serpentine Curve, um, but it is the best one if you can get it. That being said, you don't really have to prioritize it because there's a lot of good ones and you shouldn't prioritize your finishers before your enablers, basically, right? Uh, Humiliate is like total evasion. Yeah, a little bit. It's, it's, it's got that little bit of that quality. You know, you get a power, you take something. Um, so yeah, th those are the top one commons. Uh, quick water break before we get to the, the commons here. So the next tier down, and I think, by the way, you could take any of these, uh, the, the top three summonings here over like these cards if you wanted to. They're, they're pretty similar power level, right? Um, so I have these separated into Inkling, Fractal, Elemental, and the other two, because I think these ones are much better than these two. These two I just don't care about. I like Spirit Summoning a little bit more than Pest Summoning. Um, I would like a Pest Summoning to have, like I'd like access to have access to it, but I don't think it's that important unless you're specifically a deck that really, really wants it. And we'll get to that when we get to the Wither Bloom, because not even every Wither Bloom deck wants it. Um, but like the first copy of Inkling Summoning is super important for the uh, for the, the Silver Pool decks. The second copy is still very good, and the third copy is still very good, right? Um, that's the thing, Inkling Summoning specifically, I'm cool with multiple copies. I'm good with multiple copies of these too. Um, but like the first one is about most important. Fractus Summoning I think is the next most important one because like having access to a finisher at any time at the point of the game, uh, when you like, you know, you're, you're playing a Quandrix deck or a Wizard Bloom deck, or really any deck that can cast it, right? Uh, you just have access to like, when you want your finisher, you can go get your finisher, <laughs> right? Like you don't have to ha draw it in your opening hand, which is one of the awkward parts about finishers, right? Unlike Bookworm, now mind you, this is a lower impact card, of course, but unlike Bookworm, you're not stuck with this card in your opening hand for five turns, right? And, and you can't cast it, or more, <laughs> you know? Summoning is just like, Elemental Summoning is just like generically good, uh, nice beefy body, you know? It doesn't fill a particular role like these two do. Like I would even maybe, I should maybe even put this one in the middle because these two I think fill a very specific role. This one's just like generically good, but doesn't like actually offer that much to the decks it belongs in. Um, so so maybe there's like a, a one point point uh, tier one point five here, and then like these ones, you know, like I was, like I'll take them or leave them. I'll take them relatively early just because they're lessons, but I'm not prioritizing them that that highly. Next tier down is Burian Book Seated Debate. Uh, if you, you know, these cards are very, very similar. I think you should be taking Burian Books over Heated Debate. Um, they, may, they, you know, we looked at Burian Books and we're like, yeah, this this card is, you know, just it looks like one of these cards we've seen before, totally lost or whatever. But like, the fact that it costs two less a lot of the time and putting second from the top is actually huge, right? Second from the top is much, much better than one from the top because, you know, imagine you go second from the top, your three drop, right? They have to redraw that three drop on turn five or six, which is just an awful draw on turn five or six. You don't really want your three drop, especially if you've reset like a, a, a Quandrix Pledge Mage's counters or like a Blood Researcher's counters or something, right? It is better than heated debate a lot of the time because a lot of time you would like them to redraw their card, right? Uh, wait, there are the are commons are no commons taking over the two best summonings. Uh, no, I would take Inkling and Practice Summoning over these two. My my pick order would go. Uh, environmental sciences, this is pick one, pack one, mind you. Environmental sciences, right? Uh, these two summonings, and then these two, right? Um, I think you could take, you, again, you could take these over these cards. I don't think it's wild, but this is where I am right now in the format, right? I just think that having access to the lesson learn cards are, is much more important than 
a generic removal spell. Mind you, these are good removal spells, so I shouldn't call them generic, but a removal spell is a removal spell. You can pick up removal spells, you know? Uh, and then the, the last really notable comment is Expanded Anatomy, um, where this started off, this is just like slowly, slowly started to climb for me. I was like, oh yeah, this is actually really good. Uh, you know, obviously it's great in your Silver Cold decks. But then I just realized, no, 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 in every deck, I want one of these. Almost as much as Environmental Sciences. Not quite that level, but almost as much. I'm sad if I don't have the first copy, right? Because there are so many situations where you just go, huh, if I just put this in my creature, they're just dead here, <laughs> right? Or dead in two turns, right? Or there's situations where you go like, huh, I need a good blocker here. Great, my 4-4 four, four is a 6-6, six, six, right? The Vigilance is huge. Uh, that's another point towards the card. Um... The other thing, sometimes you're like, huh, I can't win this game unless I just jam my anatomy on this 3-1 flyer and hope they don't have anything, right? That's obviously not a great situation to be in, but this card's going to win you a lot of the ga a lot of games just by virtue of sometimes they don't have it, and you're not going to just, that's not going to be your plan A, but sometimes, like, just having access to this card, have like, having that as a viable plan in, uh, you know, emergency mode is giant. So I really, really want the first copy of Expanded Anatomy. And yes, Silver Quill will play two of these. Silver Quill really, really appreciates the first uh, two copies of these. I would definitely take, I would go like first Inkling Summon, in Silver Quill specifically. First Inkling Summoning, first Anatomy, second Inkling Summoning, second Anatomy, most most times. Uh, let's go to the Learn cards, of course. The, you know, the next, the, the other part of the puzzle is very important. Academic Dispute, much, much better than it looks. Uh, I think even today it's pretty underrated if you look at where it's taken, uh, you know, on 17 landscom you look at the data there. It's taken fairly late, like around 6th, 7th, 8th pick, right? This card wheels sometimes. Um, you know, worst case scenario, you cycle it, you go get uh, Environmental Sciences, but a lot of times, like, you know, you, you put this on your first strike creature or in your 3-3 uh, three, three Prismari Pledge Mage early. It just eats their early creature and you get to learn. Real fantastic. You get to block a flyer on block sometimes, like, uh, it does, you know, if you haven't played with this card a lot, it, it's, it does a lot more than it looks like it does. <laughs> um, Overgrown Arch is a card I've come down a lot on, actually, where it, I think it is worse than most of the common learned cards. If you're in specifically a Witherbloom deck that cares about, uh, life gain, this is better. But this doesn't quite have, like, the two-for-one feel that the other, uh, learned cards does, right? Because it, you have to sacrifice it. And like it's four mana to go learn the, the other learn cards are just just tend to be better so i don't take this card very early anymore um i twitch great in the wither bloom decks great in the silver quill decks uh just as like a one mana one flyer that they are going to have to kill because you're gonna augment it a lot of the time and it's just a pain great card i'm highlighting dream sticks dream tricks here because this is a card that gets passed to me a lot uh like second pick third pick fourth pick i think Potentially because the sacrifice when it becomes the target of a spell sacrifice it text looks bad But like it's just very good still like it's a three minute three two flyer and you know their learn cards sure they can kill this like they can they target you know academic dispute targets this it kills it But you get to learn and they don't get to learn because it fizzles the ability, right? So Yeah, it's it's I don't know how high you know everybody out there has this but it, it might be worth bumping this up if you don't think it's uh, that great of a card because it's quite a good card i would take it over all these cards here um yeah let's go to next one here uh the common learn cards rise of extus 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 however you want to say it <laughs> um probably the best of the bunch here i would i can make i can see an argument for hunting for specimens being better um just because cheap there's a lot of value in cheap learn um so that you can go and get your environmental sciences early but rise is just great very flexible um hunter's vestment is great too jill trip i mean even when you're not trying to get to eight lands which a lot of the green decks you know care about in some respect um it's still just good just to go get like you know a fractal summoning like if you have a field trip and a fractal summoning that's just like a, a, a one good one two punch generally in, in any deck right um arcane subtraction pop quiz I have come down on Arcane Subtraction a little bit just because, um, like, it's very good in the green, blue decks, and fine in, in green, red, or sorry, blue, red. Um, I, when you get to set up the two for one situation with this, where you, like, you know, you, your 3 3 box their 3 3 and you get to eat their 3 3 and go get a learn card, it's very good. But I do find myself firing this off more often than I would like to, a little more often than I would like to, um, just to go learn. And like gain four life or whatever, gain three life. 
So it's good, but it's not a high priority. Pop quiz is like similar where I would take my first pop quiz over my first arcane subtraction, but I think it's worse than these other cards that actually like do things, right? Uh, you know, drawing a card is nice, but the ones that actually do things I think are a little bit better. Um, this package here is uh, extremely, extremely important for any of the white aggro decks. Um, guiding voice and like during the sweatsuit tournament uh, last night, the hundred pence sweatsuit tournament, which I won by the way, uh, you know, <laughs> um, I first picked a guiding voice and I was happy to do so. I mean, I would have liked to first pick a rare obviously, but I first picked a guiding voice and I wasn't upset about it. If your white aggro deck has like three guiding voices and three study breaks, uh, you're very happy. Obviously, you want to be prioritizing the lessons uh, so that they actually go get something. And to be in my draft last night, I was I was sweating a bit because at the end of pack two, I, I only had like two lessons. Um, but if your deck has, you know, a bunch of copies of these and a bunch of copies of learn, like some good lessons, the rest doesn't matter that much, right? Um, a, a good way to frame study break is it's kind of like Ardenvale Tactician, where it's like you tap two things, go get a creature, <laughs> a cheap creature a lot of the time. Uh, and it obviously has a little more flexibility than that even. So yeah, I mean, fantastic cards. Be happy to first pick them out of weak packs. Be happy to take them like, even out of not weak packs, you should be happy to take them in like the third to fifth range, basically. Cram study and enthusiastic, oh sorry, cram session and enthusiastic study. Um, cram session is a lot better than it looks. I think this card is a, a big performer in both Quandrix and Witherbloom. Like the four life buffer, is also often a lot more relevant than you might think it is. Um, so I'm not like thrilled about taking these this one early, but I'm very happy to wheel it and will play it if I'm uh, you know kind of short on the better learn cards. Um, I'm not sad about playing it generally. Enthusiastic City is what card I want to highlight because I believe it gets put in more decks than it belongs in. A lot of Prismari decks just aren't that aggressive and like don't want a combat trick. Like you could play it if you really needed learn, but this is a card that I just, you know, I cut a lot of the time when I'm doing deck techs because yes, you would like to learn, learn is inherently good, but like you're going to be firing this off as like three mana, go learn a lot of the time if you're a controlling deck, especially if you don't have a lot of creatures, right? Like the learn cards that require you to have creatures, like, you know, not these ones because your white decks have a lot of creatures, but like, like Arcane Subtraction uh, and like Enthusiastic Study do get, go down a little bit. They, they've gone down a little bit in my pick order. So like, in an aggressive like red white deck card is great right card is very very good um but don't just jam this in you're like you're like eight creature deck or whatever uh other good generically good commons prop of zoomancy this card has very 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 good numbers on 17lines.com uh really like you know reads like a good card but i think it might be even better than some people are, are uh, taking it or, or where some people are taking it you know, I kind of clowned on Mage, uh, Mage Hunter's Onslaught during the set review with Ethan, because I do hate me a four mana removal spell, a four mana sorcery speed removal spell, but uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with a copy of two, a copy or two of this in my uh, Silver Cool decks, especially. Some of my Wither Bloom decks will, will don't mind it either. Um, but like, yeah, I I'll take this. Your Silver Cool decks do want like, you know, three to five removal spells. This is a perfectly good one. The, the blocking, you know, punishing blocking cause does matter uh, a fair bit of the time. So, you know, Okay card to take early, definitely like lower than all the other cards we've talked about besides like the, the medium learn cards, but you know, I, I will uh, I will definitely admit that I was too low on this card. Mage Duel, also really nice. Uh, it, it's a, it's probably the best interaction spell for the blue green decks. Uh, actually, well, I mean, Burning Books is better. So it's a good interaction spell. <laughs> uh, Combat Prop, huge, huge overperformer. Uh, you should be happy to first pick this card out of a weak pack, you know? Um, I, again, same like these, like, these cards and combat prof, you could argue, are in the same tier. I think they are in the same tier. I will be taking the learn lesson cards over combat prof generally. Um, but if I'm already loaded on learn lesson cards, pro combat prof is, is definitely going to get the pick there. Um, Frost Trickster, I want to point out, is like probably worse than a lot of people have it. Um, if I'm going by where it's taken on 17 lands, uh, but still a decent card, like. Not every single blue deck really likes this card. It's still gonna be an okay playable, but you shouldn't prioritize it. Um, just because a lot of the blue decks don't turn the corner all that quickly, right? So like, basically it's a it's a three mana, two, two, gain some life. And that's fine. It's not a bad card, but just don't prioritize it that highly, right? 
Um, if you're like a Quandrix deck with a high creature count and you know you can turn the corner quickly, that that's a better place for it. Or if you're like Prismari Aggro, which is a you know a subset of decks that you know you can fall into when you're in blue red, very good there. But I find most of the time you're in like ramp Quandrix or or big spells control Prismari and Frostrix sort of goes down a little bit there, right? Um, Flash of Malice, you know, have to play a copy or two. Not prioritizing it, but you know, fine card. Uh, let's go to the Pledge Mages. So I organized the Pledge Mages by order of importance slash how good I think they are. Might surprise some people to have for, for Quandrix Pledge Mage to be in that middle tier here. Um, but I think Prismari Pledge Mage and Silverquill Pledge Mage are more important to the decks they belong in. Now, I think that Pledge Mage, Quandrix Pledge Mage might be a generically better card that you can take earlier and be happy in either deck. But for a Prismari deck, it really, really appreciates the defensive two drop, or even in the aggressive versions, like a 3-3 three, three that can attack on turn five. Uh, that's that's pretty nice too. And then this card is a huge overperformer in the silver pool decks, just like the the lifelink matters, the flying matters. This is one of the only good three drops in silver quill. Um, so this ranking is largely arbitrary because when you're in the decks that like like these cards, you're gonna know which ones you want. Um, but like I, this is just like, you know, kind of just for fun, almost, ranking them. Uh, Lower Hill Pledge Mage uh, gets the, the, an unfortunate uh, honor of being the worst one. I still think it is a fine card in like Red White Aggro, but it's not a priority. There's a bunch of good threes, there's a bunch of good twos, it's just fine. Plays well with tricks, N not that important. Um, Witherbloom Pledge Mage is, is much larger than everything in the format, so it gets a nod for that. And it's a really good stabilization tool based, both based on Coming down early and blocking, or not early, but coming down and blocking basically everything. They need a trick or removal spell to get through it. And, you know, as you cast spells after it, it stabilizes you, right? Um, based on based on 17 lands data, again, going, I'm going to reference 17 lands quite a bit. But this, get, this card gets taken super, super early. And I think it's reasonable to take it, like, in the 3-5th to fifth range. I'm not super upset about taking it there. Um, but a note on all the Pledge Mages is I think they're a little less flexible than they look right like i really want them in the decks that they look like they belong in like this in silver quill this in prismari um a wither bloom pledge mage kind of is the exception to this but the problem generally is that like because mana bases in this format are uh are focused on casting like black white cards on turn two and black white cards on turn three like you want close to an even split of black and white uh, or you know red and blue or whatever your colors are like you don't often find yourself in like a very heavy blue deck or a very heavy green deck you want to cast those cheap gold cards early and you can't che you can't cast cheap gold cards early if you don't have an even split right so because of that this card is extremely hard to cast in most of your uh silver quilt sorry uh, most of your prismari decks that's not the one quandrix <laughs> blue green this is hard to cast in your blue green decks um, as early as you would like to like you can cast it at some point, right? But the draw the rule of this card in your in your Quandrix deck is often gonna be to block And you're not gonna be able to cast it on turn on turn two a lot of the time Same with these ones where like in my Laurel decks. This is white white. That's a bit tough in my Witherbloom decks This is green green. That's a bit tough, right? So, you know, the, they, they're a little bit less flexible than they look again The exception is Witherbloom Pledge Mage because you have time to you know, you have time to uh, Cast there or find your mana for this Okay, so, uh, quick water break, but now we're gonna get into the colleges. I promise we're like halfway done. <laughs> so, um, I'm just gonna go over some like important cards. Um, these are in rough order of importance, but um, the conversation of course is gonna be more important than the actual order they're in. Um, going top to bottom, like top, left, right, bottom, left, right. Um, Rutha, we already talked about her. She's just Busto though. You should take her early. This is a reason to draft Prismari. Um, like she's, this is a good splash in your uh, Quandrix decks too. It's a good splash in your Laurel deck sometimes and you're more controlling. Uh, just truly a busted card. Maelstrom Muse, good. I think not really close to the same tier as Rutha, but that speaks more to uh, to Rutha than, than Maelstrom Muse. Like this card's still very good. Even when you're not casting like the giant spells, getting a discount on your next spell is still good because it helps you double spell. And it's a good blocker, really a threat, right? Really just a really good threat. Um, Prismari Apprentice is also quite good, like better in the aggressive Prismari decks, but still good in the controlling Prismari decks. I wanna shout out this card because I have seen a lot of people be like, oh, this card, like what is it doing? Prismari wants to be controlling and wants to block. Like 
you can still block with this card on turn two. <laughs> you can still trade with your two or three drop. And then what it does offer to the controlling Prismari decks is it turns the corner very quickly, right? That's still very important in your controlling decks. Once you have stabilized the board and you, your opponent can't attack, it is very valuable for a controlling deck to be able to close the game quickly, right? So if you grow this once or twice with a Burium Books, also that's a Mondo combo, right? Burium Books on turn three, this grows to three, three. That's pretty nice. Um, if you grow this once or twice the game in a game and get it through block a little, that's real nice. And the key I want to highlight, it just blocks early if you want it to, right? <laughs> you can trade it off. Um, this, I'm, I'm pairing it with Prismari Pledge Mage here just because the twos in Prismari are so, so important. It's so, so important to lock in the good twos because there's just not a lot of them, right? And, and having access to them is, is gigantic. Uh, the next, like, after that you're playing, like, uh, I don't know, Illustrious Historian, which is, like, okay as a blocker, like, trades off, comes back later, but you often don't have time to get the illustrious historian out of your grave um express uh you know and then B befuddler is like the next one so yeah you gotta prioritize those twos uh expressive iteration just a generically good card just get a nice card draw spell you know um i want to highlight the big spells here of elemental masterpiece and creative outburst i believe that elemental masterpiece is a better spell than creative outburst like as your first and probably second uh big spell right it, it ends the game pretty much just as well, and it stabilizes you much better than Creative Outburst. Like, Creative Outburst, like, often in these decks, you're a little bit behind, and Creative Outburst, like, kills their one thing and draws you a card, which is good, don't get me wrong. Um, but, like, putting two 4-4s four on the board will stabilize you a lot easier and can turn the corner, like, much faster than, a you know, five damage to the face. So, like, I will play an Outburst, for sure, but I definitely want the two Masterpieces first. Um... And then I want to, I want to uh, shout out Practical Research here as it's good, um, but I think this card gets taken a little bit early. Like, it is a card that is very, it gets you a lot of card advantage and filtering. I'm not super worried about card advantage in this format though, because all of your cards, like so many of your cards say draw a card on them in one way or another. You know, like Rutha, you know, if you go through all the, like a lot of commons, they learn or whatever. Like learn lesson is your card advantage a lot of the time. And this is five mana. It's, it's a little bit expensive. It's a little bit clunky, a little bit expensive. So good card, but I'm not prioritizing it, right? Um, it is replaceable, yeah. It, and that's one of the things, that's one of the, um, the, the insidious things about these cards, because like, when you cast them, they feel good, right? But like, at the same time, it's not all that important to the next game plan. It's not that important to prioritize in the draft, right? So that's something you have to be a little bit cautious of, right? Uh, moving on to some more Prismari cards. Storm Kiln Artist is good if you have a density of cheap spells, worse if you have the more expensive spells. Like, this is nice when you can start chaining spells. It's not a great card, but it's a fine card, and it is scary. Um, it can lead to some really scary turns. The You don't want to have this card in the role of, like, this helps me get to my expensive stuff. Um, because it's pretty fragile and it's sometimes you just don't untap with it. Sometimes you have to block, right? Sometimes you're not in the position to like cast the four drop that doesn't block particularly well and then try to untap and ramp yourself, right? But it is okay if you have access to a lot of cheap spells. That That's kind of where I want it. Uh, Shadow to Curate. This is much better than this effect usually is. Just putting the cards in the grave matters. Obviously like the incidental spell matter stuff. So like, I'm happy to play a copy or two uh, in uh, in most of my Prismari decks. And then yeah, I honestly, Serpentine Curve probably should have gotten its own slide uh, because Serpentine Curve is very, very good. Uh, if I have a few Serpentine Curves, I really want to try to um, like maximize on the number of spells I have. Like you can try, you can really get to like four creature Prismari decks and if you're there with a bunch of curates, cheap interaction, um, that's the key, right? You really want the cheaper interaction um, so you don't just die early. But like in your four creature Prismari decks, this card is quite good, right? Because sometimes it's just a four, four or five, five on turn four. And then later it's like a nine, nine. <laughs> Heaven forbid you copy it with Teach by Example or Rutha. Um, oh, I don't think I have that on the slide actually, but Teach by Example, the hybrid, hybrid copy of spell. Um, I do like a copy of that card in, in my Prismari decks that have other good cheap cards like Brian Books or um, or Heated Debate. And it's also kind of a nice combo with Serpentine Curve because like on turn six you go like, uh, Teach by Example, 
that goes in my grave. That's an additional spell. I make two like six sixes. So that's pretty nice too. Um, but yeah, Serpent Curve I have is like the second best blue common above Frost Trickster. Like take it early, try to build around it a little bit, make concessions to it basically. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just like a really good way to end the game or stabilize. Um, Explosive Welcome I believe is the worst of the big spells for this deck and probably a better card in Quandrix than in Prismari. Like, Quandrix can get to the 8 mana. Uh, yeah, yeah, worth noting, actually. This is 8 mana, not 7, like the other big spells, right? Quandrix can get to the 8 mana uh, a little bit easier. And Quandrix also, like, appreciates, you know, some go some face damage, but appreciates the board stabilization. I mean, Prismari appreciates the board stabilization as well, but it has a harder time getting to this point, basically, right? Um, so it's, like, not at all a priority for me. If I need a big spell and I didn't get one, sure, I will take it, but I'm not taking this early by any means. So like, I'm really hoping to wield this. Uh, Grinning Agnes, you can play. It's, it's not a priority, but you can play. Pigment Storm is worth noting because it is a... Um, this is another card I find myself cutting from my uh, controlling Prismari decks because often you want your... Um, you want your removal in your Prismari decks, your controlling Prismari decks to be cheap and instant speed. So like... You can play this card, but it's just, it's a little bit, it's not really what the deck wants because the deck really wants to blow out a combat, blow out a combat trick, you know, get rid of the cheap creatures. Like, you can play a copy and it's fine, but it's just, it's just a little bit, uh, a little bit clunky. Sorry to use the C word. <laughs> I do like it quite a lot in the aggressive decks though. Like, getting out of, getting the, a big blocker, blocker out of the way, dealing some damage to the face, real good, real good. But, um, in my controlling decks, I, like, I'll, I'll cut it more often than not, right? Um... I, I guess necessary evil if you don't have other interaction, which you should have other interaction. Um, Pillar Drop Warden is a card that, it's fine, it's good. Like, I will play a copy. The more Bustos cards I have, uh, the happier I am to get to play it. Um, I don't really want to be getting back at, like a, a removal spell with this. I really want to get back like a Magma Opus or uh, one of the big spells. So the, the relation to how often I play this card and... Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a strong correlation between... How the, my top end spells, how good my top end spells are, and um, and how often I will be playing a pillow drop warden. Uh, I want to talk about Tome Shredder because I do not think it is very good in either this deck, the Prismari aggro decks, or the controlling decks, or even like basically any red deck. Like the best place for it is when you have Contorius, and we'll get to this when we get to uh, Lorehold. But very few decks actually want Contorius, but like it's just a little bit too slow. It, it, it's I'm never that afraid of it like the the most I'm afraid of it is when I come off to a little bit of a slow start and it attacks me as a th as a three mana two two haste <laughs> basically like it's okay but it's it's not a huge priority right let's see spectral mage uh, I want to point out as I, I come down on this card basically where it's good but my my prismari decks often operate as like they don't really want to turbo out the spells. They're not like just th their whole game plan isn't like turbo out those big spells and you know once I cast them I win. It's more of an incidental control game, right? Where you'll get there eventually. And if you're putting this card in your deck, in your controlling deck, like it's a windrake that helps you get to your big spell a little bit sooner, right? Like it doesn't really do what you want. So like I rather just play like a good blocker a lot of the time since this doesn't really block very well. Um, like, better in the aggressive versions of the deck, obviously, because they appreciate a 2-2 flyer. Um, but in the controlling versions, it's, like, replacement level, basically. Because um, you just get there eventually. It's not about turboing at the spells. It's about surviving. Uh, okay, so that's Prismari. <laughs> uh, next up is Quandrix. And the, I, I promise Prismari was the longest one. <laughs> that's, that's the one I had the most to talk about. Um, you know, all these are great cards. Um... I have, again, these are in rough order of power level, um, of where I prioritize them when I'm in these decks. This one's great. Uh, they, these, you, you know, you could arguably switch these two. Um, I don't, I don't have strong feelings over taking one over the other. Eureka moment is very important to just, like, gas up and bridge that gap between, like, the early game and the late game. Emergent Sequence is interesting, because I think it is very good, but you have to be cautious when you're splashing with it, right? Because... If you're splashing with it, it often just dies. Like, if you go island, 
uh, forest, go get a mountain with this, your opponent is very likely to just kill your mountain. Um, so uh, that, that's not as bad if if they if you have other red sources in your deck, but if like you're you're relying on like one or two mountains and like environmental sciences in this card to fix, like that's a little bit of a problem, <laughs> right? Um, so like. It is awesome to go Emergent Sequence into Cultivator or Eureka Moment. That's such a sick start. So look at this card more as a ramp card and less as a fixing card. Um, Bookworm, yeah, I, I do want to... I, I do think, you know, I talked about this one a little bit earlier, but I do think it is quite overrated. Um, where, again, I think if you can pick it up, it is like the best of the finishers, but the delta between the good finishers and Bookworm, or sorry, like the, the below Bookworm finishers is not that large, right? Like... Leyline Invocation, the six mana make a big fractal, is not that much worse than Bookworm, and you get it way later. This card, this card, if you look at where it's taken, it's taken like it's like the third highest picked uncommon in the set. Um, so like, if you want this card, you often have to prioritize it, and I'm just not willing to do that uh, as highly as most people are. Right. So this is kind of like the Prismari deck, where it's like you should be prioritizing your enablers over your finishers um and yeah i could even see like i i would even maybe if i'm like actually arranging these in power level move the book where i'm like to around this level um needle thorn drake is a card that i believe i have been under reading and i've only like recently come up on it as like you know if you don't have pledge mage or like a busted two drop this is like your two drop of choice it just does a really good job of, of blocking early um a lot of times it's just moat <laughs> moat as in like you know for, for people not familiar with the the card moat moat just says creatures without flying can't attack your opponents generally won't attack into this even when they have like three creatures on board because they just don't want to lose one of their early creatures right so it buys you a lot of time it also combos well with uh mage duel combos well with uh devouring tendrils the bite the fights sorry the bite spell um with the uh, arcane subtraction negative four right so, yeah, this, this is actually, like, a really, really good defensive two drop. Um, <laughs> all right, here's the big one. Let's get to Zimone. So, I've thought about Zimone a lot <laughs> in the past few weeks, and here's here's my take on her, right? Um, so, I do believe she is in a very similar camp as Bookworm, right? Where I, I take her much lower than anybody else or not anybody else but then a lot of people where if you look at the where she's taken data and like so i don't get her as often uh, as as a lot of people because i think it's in a very similar camp as bookworm where if you get there to eight mana it's pretty good right it's definitely good and it can definitely win, win and take over a game i i will not deny that right it is a good effect but the, the problem is uh, again you care a lot more about your enablers than you do your payoffs because your payoffs are generally replaceable and you may look at zimone and see like oh it's a it's a enabler as well because it puts lands on the battlefield but like that ability doesn't matter that much like sometimes like very very rarely does it matter basically um you're often just spending mana on affecting the board or drawing cards or you know like eureka moment does a better job of this ability than zimone does right and the four mana ability sure yeah you you activate it sometimes but you most often don't have the time to activate it sorry i, I should specify the four mana ability only draws you one card right so she is a good card in the deck i'm just not prioritizing her highly and again she is interchangeable with the other uh the other finishers right if she was a 2-1 or a 1-3 i'd be all about her yeah that's 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 the thing right if she could just trade off like she's kind of analogous to a prismari apprentice right or she would be if she had slightly better stats but the big problem with her is she's a 1-2 and you just cannot choose to trade her off early <laughs> right you know so anyways uh moving on aether helix uh this card's okay it is nice when you get to bounce their like 4-4 token and get something back, but it's a little bit clunky where like you need to have a target for both modes. So like if you just want to regrow something and you can't and there's nothing you want to bounce because uh, they have like ETB creatures or, you know, only your own creatures to bounce, you can't do that. Um, plus, if you want to bounce something, you need a permanent in your graveyard. So she's okay, right? Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's just, you know, move on from that. It's a fine card. Uh, I'm not prioritizing it though. Coming in late, uh, this is Zimone worse than all the cards in the top? Yes, I believe so. Just to uh, put a button on that. <laughs> um, 
th these are the other like Quandrix finishers that I'm looking for. Uh, Elemental Masterpiece, Serpent Curve, Leyline Invocation. Um, you should probably. So one of the troubles, like one of the problems you can run into with these Quandrix decks is like ramping to nothing. And so if you're in pack two, and you don't have like you have prioritized the enablers appropriately, like you really do want to um pick up two, three, four of these kind of cards, right? Because you can often end up in the ramp to nothing situation. Or the situation where you're like, my game plan is to outcard them, right? Like you're you're a typical draw cards, ramp deck. And like I've gotten myself into situations where it's like, oh, I'll just draw a bunch of cards and that's how I will win the game. But like similar to Prismari Pledge Mage, where you would like a way to turn the corner quickly. You really want a way to turn the corner quickly, right? Like, the cards you draw are much more effective when you have a 9-9 in play, <laughs> you know? So, uh, basically, these are a very important part of the deck. Uh, just making sure you lock in 3, 4, 5 of these, right? So, yeah. Uh, a few other cards here. Symmetrist is just a really good blocker. Snow Day, you know, it's a, it's a nice card, both on offense and defense. I've like Kelpie Guy, I've like Scurry Colony. Scurry Colony is like my second two drop of choice outside of uh, Neil Thorne Drake. Like, this is a. In, in the Sweatsuit tournament last night, um, we had open deck lists, and my finals opponent in our pod, I, I was playing uh, Silver Quill, right? Silver Quill with uh, a lot of flyers. I loaded their deck list, and I was so, so afraid because they had six Scurry Colonies. <laughs> that, this card really wrecks the Silver Quill decks. Luckily, they weren't actually maining all of them. So I was okay, um, but like the fact that this trades with all their flyers and bricks them later is pretty is pretty nice, right? So this is a good defensive two drop, and of course turns the corner too, right? Um, Kelpie guide's nice as just like a, an early ramp tool and turns into a removal spell later. Um, you know, not a not a huge pick, but like I'm I'm prioritizing all these cards in like the the, the you know the fifth the sorry fourth to seventh range basically, maybe a little bit earlier than that in week packs. Um, I want to I want to highlight practice summoning as like um, another very important piece to the deck. Like it's very similar to these cards, right? You can replace these cards with practice summoning. Like I was mentioning before, it's in, it's very nice to get access to your finisher at any point of the game, not just like when you when your deck chooses chooses to present it to, to yourself, right? Like when or to you. Um, like having all your learn cards go and get your finisher is pretty nice. So I'm I'm definitely prioritizing the first practice summoning in these Quandrix decks uh, for a similar reason as why I'm prioritizing these these cards. <laughs> um, and then you know uh, you know anti shout out to Biomathematician where yeah this card just isn't really what you want like it doesn't block particularly well like it gives you like two trumps maybe a trade uh, it's a, it's actually a really good blocker against the Silver Quill deck well some Silver Quill decks not not always. Um, sometimes they're just beating you down with flyers. If you're in a position where you have four of these, it gets a little bit better. My problem with that is like, I'm never prioritizing them highly enough to get four of them. And if they're wheeling and I get four of them, that most likely means I'm in a position in a, in a seat that, that uh, you know, Quandrix is very open. And I most likely just have better cards. Right, so <laughs> it, I just all don't really play this card generally. It, it looks like it does the thing you want, but you know, it, it just it just it isn't that important, basically, right? Um, let's move on to Silver Quill. Uh, you know, near and dear to my heart. Uh, this again, this is in like rough uh, power rankings here. Actually, I think Inkling Summoning should be above Silver Quill Apprentice. That that that's a mistake on my part there. But Killian's Busto, we talked about that. These cards are also quite good. First copy, the second copy, the third copy of Inkling Summoning, all very good. Uh, as if you're prioritizing the learn lesson cards, or the, the sorry, the learn cards appropriately, like uh, Study Break and Guiding Voice. Uh, Spiteful Squad is okay. Um, I'm not prioritizing it really, but it, it, it's a fine playable. Silver Quill Apprentice does a lot more than it looks like it would do. Like, uh, they, you know, a lot of people were clowning this card, myself included, because <laughs> you compare it to. Quandrix Apprentice, and you're like, that one draws a card. This one gives you plus one plus so, right? But the damage really, really does add up um, with this card on your cheap flyers, or not even flyers, right? Just on your like two two. 
getting through for three instead of four. Um, you know, making a trade happen where your opponent didn't expect it to, right? Uh, so Silver Cold Apprentice is pretty premium for the deck. And, and these cards are close, basically. But I do think the first Inkling Summoning is more important. Um, Allen Shield Mage is better than looks as well. Like, I... Generally, the way I'm building my Silver Cold decks is, like, cheap creatures that I'm just hoping to get in early. Like, I'm not really planning to put counters on them and, like, push them through. Like, I could do that, and that's, like, a reasonable strategy. But basically, the way I think about my Silver Cold decks are... Is like my cheap creatures will get in for the damage they get in for um and then i really want to finish the game off with the flyers the shield mages uh we'll get to a few more flyers uh in the next slide pledge mage is another flyer right so like evasion is really really important in these decks um and a really good place to put your pumps from this or your counters or whatever right um and yeah spiteful squad like i said is whatever you can play it but um your four drops really your four and five drops really want to have evasion so um, these are the order of, uh, importance for the cheap cards, I believe. Prof is busted. Order is also, you know, close to as good. Um, Eye Twitch is great. Poet's good. These two are largely replace replaceable, but I'll play them if I don't get the great ones. Uh, the great two drops. Eager First Year plays really well with Steady Break and with Guiding Voice, uh, as does Leech Fanatic, Fanatic honestly. And it adds, as do all these cards. <laughs> you know, it's highlighting why those cards are so good. Um, but yeah, just rough order of, of where I want them. Uh, these cards are, well, these cards are very important. This card is not very important. Um, like, you will play Shaving Laureate because it's a Windrake in this deck, appreciates the Windrake, but the ability is not that important. Um, it can be annoying sometimes, again, not that important. These two cards, on the other hand, are quite important. Combat Prof is more important than Spectre of the Defense, but Spectre of the Defense is also really good in the deck. Like, a lot of the time what happens with these decks is you get some early damage in and after the early damage your opponent's at like seven right and they, they get into a spot where they have to kill like all of your flyers or else they just die right inspector like dings them for four a turn in the late game while helping you uh stabilize like you know stay alive in a race combat prop also you know it's it's just busted like this card is very very good um just pushes damage on your early creatures is an evasive threat um, the, the, the mage, the Alan's shield mage, very similar thing. You get them, them down to seven, they have to kill it. And if they kill it, well, they take three damage, right? So, yeah. Um, reflective golem, also a really key part of this deck. Really good. Um, I shouldn't say key part, because it's not like you, you need to have this card for the deck to be good. But this card, when I have guiding voices and expanded anatomy, which I really, really hope to have in the, in the, uh, silver cool decks, like, uh, is quite powerful. And uh, Essence Infusion as well. Essence Infusion, the, the two mana, put two counters, something gets lifelink. That, that's also a really nice combo. Guiding Voice in particular is great because you go like three three mana, uh, Guiding Voice, copy it, go learn twice. Like, that's just great. <laughs> so um, I prioritize this card, but not like super highly. Not over any of these cards, basically, right? Um, moving on to, yeah, these ones, we talked about these, um, Hunt for Specimens is, is interesting because it looks like it doesn't really belong, um, because it's a two drop that doesn't have power, or doesn't have two power, but it's just good enough, basically. Um, my Silver Cold decks, kind of like I was talking about before, like, they aren't, they aren't super reliant on getting an early damage, like, they would like to, um, but it's not critical because the Flyers often do a good job of finishing them off. And the value of having a two mana learn card like usurps me needing all my two drops to have two power basically, right? And especially going like hunt for specimens into um, into inkling summoning, like that's still a pretty good curve, especially because the hunt for summons can help. Hunt for specimens can help you in a race when you have a bunch of flyers, right? You have a bunch of flyers, they have a bunch of ground creatures. Your your one one blocks at some point, right? Um, and you know the one one can wear counters too, so you know it's not it's not irrelevant in the early game. Uh, Pilgrim of the Ages also. One that might look out of place in this deck, but I think is actually really good. Again, it looks like it's like, oh, it's like two power, three mana creature. Why do I want this? But getting, ensuring you get to six, seven, eight, or sorry, uh, four, five, six lands is really important for these decks because these flyers are so important, like these four and five mana flyers. And of course, getting to your six mana for your Rise of Estus, that, that matters too. Um, but specifically with Combat Professor, it's a really nice combo because you go like Cast Pilgrim, uh, cast combat professor 
you attack with a 3 1 Vigilance that they don't really want to block, <laughs> right? So, uh, nice combo there. And yeah, I'm happy to play two copies of this generally in my Silver Cold decks. Unless you're like really low to the ground, I'm like a little, little bit less enticed there, but still a good card, right? Also, you can just like grind them out with this card a lot of the time. Like, you cast this, they go, okay, sure. You trade off. It gets to the point of the game where, yeah, I, like, I faced Jim Davis last night uh, in, in the Sweatsuit Invitational. And he had a much grindier Silver Cold deck than I did. And uh, I happened to draw, like, a good card at the right moment. But, like, I was just on the verge of getting outgrinded by this card. Because he was at the point where he could just keep picking it up and playing it each turn. And each of my draws, which is, you know, going to be, like, three mana three ones and, like, two mana two twos, would just get bricked by this each turn. So, yeah, it, it can do a bit of grinding. Um, yes, Grant, Grant brings up a really good point. You can also learn away the learn card. Uh, you can loot away the learn, learn cards if you're, um, sorry. W when you get your lands off of this and you have learn cards and you're out of lessons, you can rummage away the land cards you get off this. So yeah, that's that's very important. Um, Silver Quill definitely wants a few of these tricks. Um, the more Killians I have, <laughs> the more I want Professor's Warning and Beaming Defiance, but, can, uh, but Beam Defiance and uh, Professor's Warning are quite good for protecting your flyers. The more low to the ground you are, the more you want Essence Infusion, like the more Star Pupils, Eye Twitches, uh, Poets you have, the more you want Essence Infusion. Um, Killian also is a, a card that makes me want Essence Infusion a bit more, just because it's one mana. Um, but I won't, I won't play it in, in all of my Silver Cool decks, basically. Um, underperformers. These cards are not very good. <laughs> do not prioritize these cards. Probably do not play these cards, even if they end up in your pile, right? Uh, like, they are... Dueling Coach is a little bit better than Incaster, but, like, you really want your... You really want your four and five mana cards to fly. Um, you don't want it to be like, all right, I played these cards and now in four turns, like it's gonna be a problem for you, you know? Um, yeah, don't prioritize them. And I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to not play these cards even if they just end up in my lap, right? Um, moving on to a few more underperformers. Ingredient like is good in the really low to the ground versions of the deck with a bunch of augmentations, but I don't generally play the card. Stone Rise Spirit is okay if you have a lot of Guiding Voices, but underwhelming otherwise, because a lot of your creatures are already half-flying. Lumamancer is similar to Ingredient, where if I have a lot of Guiding Voices and I have a lot of cheap spells, it becomes okay. Um, like, there are decks where Lumamancer is quite good. It's not just a generically good card. Um, you want to be spell-heavy and cheap spell-heavy, basically. Learn Lesson Heavy, too. Mage Hunter uh, is fine. Like... It's worse than Spectre of the Fens, worse than most of the four and five mana cards we talked about already. Like, you can get... Like, this is another card where it's... it's You have to be careful, because there's definitely situations where your opponent has cast this card, and you, you're like, wow, that's really annoying. Like, I, I that's such a good card, right? Or the same for you, where it's like, you cast the card, and it's like, oh, wow, like, I'm really destroying my Prismari opponent here, right? Um, but it's not, like, a priority by any means, and I, I want the flyers over this one. Um, some more underperformers, Stroke of Confidence. Again, if I'm like really spell heavy and I'm like boom mancing, it's an okay card. Um, the more, if I have like, you know, Leona and Light Scribe, <laughs> maybe it gets a little bit better, but I, I don't love this card. Like, it's fine. It's not a priority again. Um, Exhilarating Elocution. Uh, this is not like, like in my very low to the ground decks. I guess all of these cards get a little bit better in the very low to the ground decks, right? Where you're like, have a bunch of ones and twos, but that's generally not how my silver cold decks are built. Now that might just be how I build them. And that might just be, I'm more biased towards the flying versions, but I don't really care that much about elocution. Um, like generally I cast this and it's like, all right, I get two counters on my things and my things are a little bit bigger for a turn, but it's not that much of a pain generally. Um, like, it's a card that takes you from like winning to very winning, which has some value. I'm, a, you know, I, I won't, uh, I won't deny, but it's not a card I prioritize at all. And Star Pupil, unfortunately, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, Zachary Quinto here did not, <laughs> not, not performing the format, unfortunately. Like again, all the stuff I said about Lumamancer and these cards. If you have a lot of ways to put counters on cards, it does get better, but it's not a priority for these decks. Okay, home stretch, folks, home stretch. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, Wither Bloom. Oh no, we have two more colleges. Okay, almost home stretch. <laughs> so, Wither Bloom is 
kind of tricky where I was looking at the stats on 17 lands and all of the Witherbloom cards get taken so much higher than I would have expected. Like, this is the seventh highest picked common in the format, Blood Researcher. Uh, Pledge Mage is like the 10th highest picked common in the format, which is just kind of mind boggling and that might explain why I don't end up in this deck all that often or why, like, why I don't get good versions of it because people, it's, it's, it's like somewhat contested. Um, but basically where I am on this deck is like, if I fall into it, it's fine. I'm never trying to get into it. And the ways I fall into it are like, I'm just getting a good, a bunch of good black or green cards, right? Um, I think there are three-ish ways to build Witherbloom. And the first one here is like focusing on light gain synergy slash blood researcher. Like if you end up with three of these, two of these, um, you can really go all in on this and like be playing uh, Infuse the Vitality and be playing, uh, where's that card? Uh, Professor's Warning, right? Essence Infusion. Um, Witherbloom Apprentice is a very important piece of that deck when you're going on the Life Gain Synergies, right? Witherbloom Pledge Mage, quite important. Uh, Infuse is good, it's good with the, the Blood Researcher because like they have to double block it at some point and then you kill their two creatures and the Blood Researcher comes back, right? Dina is whatever. It's not that important. Like, it's fine to just sit around, but like the sacrifice stuff has not panned out to be that good. Basically, like she's more of a life gain combo card than a sacrifice card. Um, I do actually think Tenured Incaster is pretty good in this deck just because it gives you incidental life gain triggers and it makes your blood researchers attack for two more, right? So it, it actually is a good card in this deck. Um, past that though, like, like they, they my whole, my big picture take on this deck, this this version of Witherbloom, is that it's a lot of pieces that you need to pick up. And even when you do pick up all the pieces, it's not even like so much better than the next best thing, right? Like, it's a good thing to be doing. But I feel like at this point in the format, where people are prioritizing these cards, I won't be getting these cards. I won't be getting all the pieces unless I take them all super hard, highly and I'm just not willing to do that, right? So that's one thing you can do with Other Bloom. Um, if you have that life gain stuff going on, all these cards go up. Overgrown Arch is pretty reasonable when you have a bunch of Blood Researchers, a bunch of Dinas. Um, it's fine there. You know, I say I don't like this card that much in general, but it's good there. Um, and then you can also kind of do like the super finicky, <laughs> like Demigoth, Titan, Demigoth, Woe Eater kind of stuff where like this is more of a combo deck um, where like you're setting up Pest Summonings and these cards and Tend the Pests and Deadly Brew. Like, this is more focused on fodder. I don't love this, but it's a thing you can do, <laughs> basically. Where, like, you sacrifice your Titan to the Tend the Pests or, you know, you like... I don't think Demogoth Titan is actually a bad payoff. And I think it's much better than War Eater because you, you can actually choose to not attack with it. And two-shotting them is pretty good. But, like... It's still not that great, <laughs> basically. So I want to point this out as a thing you can do. But, you know, again, the same thing. Same thing applies where I'm just not going to prior be prioritizing these cards as uh, high, high enough where I need to be... Uh, I I'm going to end up myself... I'm going to find myself in this deck very often. The this kind of stuff, the, the Groff, Unwilling Ingredient stuff, like, it's part of the deck, but it's not all that impressive. You know, you can put it in your deck. It's not going to be that great, though. That's, you know. Um, if you have a nutty version of the deck, yeah, sure. Biograph's going to be good. Otherwise, there's just better synergies in the format, right? That, that's going back to the big picture stuff. The, the college synergies, the planted college synergies are less important than just the learn lesson stuff. So don't try super hard for this, right? I do want to point out Plum the Forbidden because it's good in both versions of the deck. Because um, it does, like combo with all the pest stuff um but also is like a mondo combo with both wizard bloom apprentice and dina because like you can just sack your board and kill them with wizard bloom apprentice plus dina a lot of the time your board doesn't even have to be that big for that to happen um i definitely want to wheel this card i don't want to be taking it early but if you have it in your pile you should consider playing it if you have enough combos with it um the third way to draft wizard bloom is of course just like 
almost like Quandrix, where you're just like ramping ish to big things and having uh, fractal summonings and leyline invocations and a bunch of learn lessons. Um, that's a third way to draft it, and this is the way that I, this is the deck that I most often find myself in, um, where I just have picked learn lesson cards very highly, and I get some good black and green cards, and this is where I've ended up basically. Uh, Honor Troll sucks. Don't play this card unless, like, you really need to. It just doesn't do that much. Like, <laughs> sure. Like, if, like, the thing is, when you turn this card on, it's like, all right, I got a 4-4. <laughs> and it's not, it's pretty hard to turn on, even in, like, the nuts version of the deck. Um, so this isn't, this, this ain't the payoff you're looking for, right? Um, okay, Lore Halls. Now we're in the home stretch. <laughs> so... Big picture, I do believe Lorehold Aggro is a good deck, uh, and it plays out pretty similarly to Silver Quill, where like you well, you want all the good white aggro cards in Lorehold Aggro, like the same ones you want in Silver in Lorehold in a uh, Silver Quill, but where Lorehold or sorry Silver Quill is more reliant on flyers, Lore uh, Lorehold is more reliant on combat tricks and cheap creatures. I don't love being here, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> and like, Quintorius is not a thing you're gonna be doing one, you know, unless it's like one in every 40 drafts, basically, right? Like, you could put this card in your deck and it's an okay card for your like spirits as just like a pseudo lord, but you shouldn't try to build around the card very often, right? Like you shouldn't try to like, maybe you'll include a Tome Shredder where you wouldn't, and maybe you'll include an Illustrious Historian where you wouldn't. But it's not a reason to go into Lorehold, right? Um, generally, my good Lorehold decks, my good Lorehold non-aggro decks, are just, like, value decks. One of the problems with the Lorehold stuff is that they are often better splashes in Prismari than they are just, like, cards on their own. Like... The, the Lorehold cards, there are some really, really nutty ones. Like, Lorehold Command is one of the best cards in the set. Um, the 2-4 rare, um, that, the, the scroll wielder that, like, casts spells out of your grave, that card's very, very good. Um, Past Caller is very, very good. Problem is, they all play very well in Prismari, too. So, the, the Prismari drafters are going to snap those up, right? Um, I do want to give a shout-out to Reconstruct History, because I think this card is actually pretty good. Um, where... Like, if you have, like, Biblioplex Assistant or, like, um, you're in a deck that wants to play Campus Guide or Letter Acceptance, like, when you get to the point where you're getting back three cards with this, it is really good. And even two, when your spells you're getting back um, are good, is pretty good. So I think this is a bit of an underrated card right now, basically. Not a card I'm going to play in all my decks, for sure. And it's definitely a card that you want in the grindy decks. Um, but I think, again, a little bit underrated because this goes last pick, basically. I mean, as it should, but, <laughs> you know, I, I don't expect this to go fourth pick or anything, but. Um, so let's just talk about some lore hold aggro cards. Um, Pledge Mage, Twin Squad Shaman, they both play well as tricks. Um, if I have these cards, I, I want the cheap interaction spells, or sorry, the cheap tricks. Um, you want, you know, the, the white cards like the one in uh, Prismari, sorry, in uh, lore hold. These names, folks, these names. Silver Quill. <laughs> Guiding Voice, uh, Study Break, you know, all the ones that, that I mentioned before. Uh, Enthusiastic Study, the plus three, plus one Trample, plays particularly well with this card. Stonebound Mentor, as much as I hate a Centaur Courser, Centaur Courser is actually pretty good in this format, so, like, you'll you'll be okay with playing this card. Um, yeah, here's, here's all the cards I was talking about. You know, you'll play them. I'm not super excited about it, but you'll play them. You generally end up in this deck, uh, so just, just to, like, you know, put a, a stamp on why you would want to draft this deck. If you go down a Silver Quill path and the black cards aren't coming to you and you, like, end up in a spot where you do pick up some good, like, you see some good uh, Lorehold rares like Blade Historian or, you know, even just, like, I don't know. What's another good? Like, you know, the Command, right? Uh, the Command. That's how you can get into this deck. But I sh don't think it is a common path, basically. And you shouldn't, like, try to be getting into the deck. Okay. Promise. We're almost a few more slides. <laughs> Odds and ends. Just this cycle of, uh, of uh, you know, these these hybrid quad quad hybrid cards. Um, 
they're good. Don't try to splash them. Like, all these are pretty good cards in their respective decks. Um, you know, we talked about Demigod Titan, but all these other ones are, you know, just like pretty, you know, Dramatic Finale is the best of the bunch, followed by like Blade Historian, and then like these are just like generically fine cards. A note on Elemental Expressionist that I didn't know until the other day. Um, this stacks the way you want, so if you cast multiple, tur multiple spells in a turn, you can go trigger the same creature, I get two 4-4s four in that same creature. Um, so yeah, just keep note of that. Um, yep, about that cycle, the commands mostly are very good. This is Busto tier. Um, Quandrix Command and Silver Cold Command are better than they read. These are like just under Busto tier, and Quandrix Command might be Busto tier. Um, if you wanted to make, like, you know, if you wanted to be nitpicky. Um, Prismari Command is not that great. It's fine. It's best in a, like, a deck that is splashing that appreciates the filtering and the treasure making card, or the treasure making mode. Um, but, like, not a high pick. I'm going to be picking a lot of cards in Prismari over it. And then, like, Wither Bloom Command, like, it's like a D, whatever. <laughs> like, you could play it. Sometimes it does good things, but you don't want to prioritize it ever. Like, it's like your 23rd card, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, chat. It electrolyzes the actual Prismari command, yeah. Um, Illuminate History, a lot better than looks. This card, think of this card as a 4-mana 3-2 that, like, filters out your lands late game or filters out, um, like, expensive spells. The getting to 7 cards is pretty trivial, especially in Prismari, because Prismari, uh, you know, has a lot of its spells going to the grave. In Lorehold, your creatures stay on the battlefield, so it's not as trivial, but I very rarely... When I have wanted to get this card, um, have not had that turn on. And even in Lorehold, and if you're playing this in your aggressive deck, like, you generally don't play Thrill of Possibility in your aggressive deck just to filter lands, right? Like, that's just, like, not the way you want to go about it. But having access to this as, like, hey, when I'm flooded, I can draw three off of my lands in my hand. That's quite good, right? So, yeah, this card's good. Take it, like, you know, fairly early. Uh, three to five, six range. Tempted by the Orc. I don't know why, but this card gets passed to me a lot. I assume it's because the blue, blue, blue is intimidating. Don't be intimidated by it. There's good fixing in the set. Like, this card's good late still. It's Conceal the Fractals. You don't have to cast it on turn four. When you do, it's nutty. Great card. Don't pass it. Um, this is a card that's gone, also gone up in my estimations. I've played this card more often than I thought I would. Um, it's good when you have, you know, the... It, it kind of fills the same role as... Uh, Pillar Drop Warden is like when you have the very good spells to get back, you can play it. Um, it's good with Learn Lesson cards because like you kind of get a two for one in that in that sense. Um, not you know not a great card, but twenty third playable material. You know, maybe even higher than that in some decks. So don't uh, discount this card. Um, my t this this slide is basically like <laughs> this is my slide for just talking about splashing this format in general. I think people splash a little too often. I, I see a lot of decks that are like, you know, two campuses and then close to a 666 mana base, <laughs> right? You should generally not draft as if you are planning to splash unless you have environmental sciences. Like, environmental sciences is so much better of a fixer than any of the other cards, right? Now, if you find yourself in a spot where you need emergency fixing, all of these cards can do the job, but you shouldn't, like, hope to put them in your deck. Especially Archway Commons, like, this is not a good fixer. Don't put this in your three-color deck just because you want fixing. Like, Double Tap Land is very punishing, especially when your your Splish Splashy decks also have very expensive spells most of the time, right? Double Tap Land is not good when you when you have a bunch of expensive spells in your deck, right? Play Archway Commons and Letter Acceptance when you're, like, a four-color deck uh, if you need the fixing, but again like sciences should be the way you're trying to splash and don't go through your draft thinking like oh i need to pick up flex fixing because you just probably shouldn't if you don't have sciences right this card's very good don't pass this card <laughs> this the hall of oracles looks like a lot of cards we've seen before but it's nutty it's one of the best rares in the set uh putting counters on your anything <laughs> is very very good it will take over the game very quickly great card uh just a few more slides Shout out to these two cards, a lot better than they look because this set is full of instant sorceries, right? So, you know, you die on Gambit something, they put it on the battlefield. So they, they can't really put anything on the battlefield very often because often they'll have spells in their hand. 
There's not a ton of big things. The big things are bookworm and instant sorceries that make tokens. Um, so I'm very willing to play this card. This color card goes very, very late. Chaos Warp is a very similar thing. You know, them flipping a land, you know, you're killing their big thing and then flipping a land is not the worst. And sometimes they just hit a spell right off the top and they negate no value out of it. So good, both good cards. Best card in the set. I don't want to talk about it very much more, <laughs> but this is the best card in the set when you can make it work. Take it early. Don't pass it. End of story. The next mastery is Busto. D Spark. Don't play this card. <laughs> this card is very not good. Um, look, you could ostensibly play it and it wouldn't be horrendous, but you shouldn't be looking to include it basically unless you really are, are short, short for on removal because it doesn't hit the big things and it doesn't hit the small things. It just hits the medium things, right? Like, the big things in this set are the tokens. The medium things, there's a few good medium things, right? Like like uh, Combat Prof or like, you know, I don't know, a medium, medium sized flyer, but it's just very, very narrow. Very, very narrow, right? Um, it's not a priority, you could play it, right? But try not to. Uh, Manatize, good in your aggressive white decks. Play the card. <laughs> it's going to get something for very little investments. Uh, yeah, card is quite good. It, it looks like kind of like a meme card, but it's good, you know. And a few more. Yeah, last last one here, or just last two. Primal Command, I got a lot of like, is this card a good card? Yes, the card's very good. It doesn't look very impressive, um, but all of the modes like add up to something good most of the time. Like putting a land on top and gaining seven when your opponent's behind is very good. Getting your best creature and gaining seven makes up for the, the tempo loss of you tapping out Five mana, right? Gaining seven life, uh, you know, is okay because, or sorry, getting the best creature in your deck and tapping five mana is okay because you've gained seven life. So good card, take it early. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say they don't like the card, but it's a good card. Um, and Mammer Lapse, better than counter spell a lot of the times. It's like the Burian books of counter spells. Play it, take it early. Snakes and Veil. I think it's the last card. Nope, nope, two more. <laughs> Snakes and Dale is, uh, for whatever reasons, plays out a lot better in this set than it is in the last. This is also a relatively high pick. Uh, quite a good card. And Abundant Harvest. Good cantrip. That's all. <laughs> all right, all right. We're done, chat. We're done. Hour later, but that's it.